Hello everyone, this is Kisle from Eureka, and the topic for today's discussion is the Google Cloud Storage. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at the agenda for today's session. So firstly, we'll understand what is Google Cloud Storage. Next, we'll learn why is Google Cloud Storage necessary and why is it used in the industry. Moving forward, we'll see the various cloud storage services which are offered by Google. And finally, we'll see a demo on each one of these storage services one by one. So let's understand what is Google Cloud Storage. Now, Google Cloud Storage is a set of various storage services offered by Google for different domain scenarios. It is a restful online file storage web service for storing and accessing data on the Google's infrastructure. Google Cloud Storage allows worldwide storage and retrieval of any amount of data at any time. You can use the cloud storage for a range of scenarios including servicing website content, storing data for archival and disaster recovery, or distributing large data objects to users via direct download. So let's understand why we need Google Cloud Storage. First of all, it has a single API for all storage classes. The cloud storage consistent API latency and speed across storage classes simplifies development integration and reduces code complexity. You can set custom policies to transition data seamlessly from one storage class to the next, depending on your cost and availability needs at that time. It is designed for 11 lines of durability. Google Cloud Storage is designed for 99.99 that are 11 lines annual durability. It stores the data redundantly with automatic checksum to ensure data integrity. With multi-regional storage, your data is maintained in geographically distant locations. It is highly scalable and performant. Now, Google Cloud Storage is practically infinitely scalable. Whether you are supporting a small application or building a large exabyte scale system, Google Cloud Storage can handle anything. It is strongly consistent. When a write succeeds, the latest copy of the object is guaranteed to be returned to any get globally. Now coming to the zero carbon emission. You have many things to consider in the cloud platform you choose. First of all, it's the price, the security, the openness, and of course, the products available. Now, Google believes you should consider the environment too. A sustainable cloud is not only good for the environment, but also good for your business. By moving storage from a self-managed data center to GCP, the emission directly associated with your company's data storage will be zero. Now here you can see we have certain users who use Google Cloud Platform for their storage services. We have Spotify, Coca-Cola, Evernote, Motorola, Philips, and many more. Now let's have a look at the various Google Cloud Storage services provided by Google. We have the Cloud Storage, we have Cloud SQL, next we have the Big Table, the Cloud Data Store, and Cloud Spanner. We'll look into the details of each and every one of these services in this video. So let's get started with the cloud storage. The cloud storage is a scalable, fully managed, highly reliable, and cost efficient object or blob store. It redefines what the industry can expect from online storage by providing a unified offering across the availability spectrum. From live data tapped by today's most demanding application to cloud archival solution, near line, and code line. It has many features such as single API across storage. Scalable to exabytes of data, very high availability across all storage classes. As we saw earlier, that Spotify was one of the users of the Google Cloud Storage. Now, Spotify uses Google Cloud Storage for storing and serving music. Using regional storage allowed them to run audio transcoding in Google's Compute Engine close to production storage. Now, working with cloud storage, there are two different methods. We have the console and we have the GSUtil tool. Now, console is provided by Google on the web page or the web UI itself. And GSUtil is a set of commands or tools which are used in the cloud SDK. So let's go ahead and see how we can work with the Google Cloud Storage. First of all, you need to log in into your Google Cloud Platform account and you need to go to the console. In the left hand side in this toolbar, you can see we have the various services which are the compute, storage, networking, monitoring, and the development tools and the big data tools. So today we'll focus on the storage services. So let's go to the storage section. As you can see here, I have the option to create a bucket. So let's understand what is a bucket. The cloud storage lets you store unstructured data objects in containers which are known as buckets. 
You can serve static data directly from cloud storage or you can use it to store data for other Google Cloud Platform services. So let's go ahead and create a bucket. So first we need to input the bucket name. Next we have to select the storage classes. Now there are four types of storage classes which are multi-regional, regional, near land and core land. Out of these two the multi-regional and regional are based on the geographic regions whereas near land and core land are based upon the usage. Now multi-regional is used for the data which is accessed frequently around the world. Regional is used for the data which is accessed frequently in only one part of the world. Coming on to near land and core line, near land is best suited for the data which is accessed less than once per month. That means you can access it maximum once per month. Now core line is best used for the data which is accessed less than once per year. So now I'm going to select the regional storage class. Next we have to select the regional location and just tap on the create button. And within seconds your bucket will be created. As you can see that there is nothing inside this bucket here. You can directly drop your files here from your PC or your laptop and you have the option to upload files upload a folder or create a folder. Let me just upload one file. Within seconds the file is uploaded and it's shown here. Now that you have seen how to create a bucket and upload a file the same can be implemented using the gsutil commands. For that we need to download the cloud SDK. Now cloud SDK can be downloaded from Google. Tap on the first page and you'll be redirected to this page. Now you can install it for Windows, Mac OS, Linux or other operating systems. I have already downloaded so I'll just fire up the cloud SDK shell. Now just to create a bucket all you need to do is type in the command gsutil mb which is make bucket hyphen c which stands for the class the storage class which I'm going to select as regional hyphen l which stands for location and hyphen p which stands for the project id and finally you have to input the name of the bucket. For project ID you can refer to the my first project or whatever be your project just copy your ID from here paste it and then finally you need to input the name of the bucket. So now to list the buckets all you need to type in is gsutil ls. As you can see we have two buckets which is edureka bucket and the edureka bucket 2. The same will be reflected on the website itself. As you can see here, Edureka Bucket 2 is also here. Now, to list the contents of a bucket, you need to tap in the commands gsutil ls r and the name of the bucket. So, as you guys saw earlier, that I uploaded an image to the first bucket which I created, Edureka Bucket. So, let me list the contents of that one. As you can see it's showing me the image which I uploaded. Now to delete a bucket we have an easy command of gsutil rm hyphen r and the name of the bucket. Here I am deleting the second bucket I created and after that we'll list the buckets to see whether it was deleted or not. The same will be reflected on the website. Let me refresh this page. As you can see we have only one bucket which is the Edureka bucket. So now let's go ahead with Cloud SQL. Now Cloud SQL is a fully managed database service that makes it easy to set up, maintain, manage and administer your relational MySQL or PostGRE SQL database in the cloud. Now Cloud SQL offers high performance, scalability and convenience. Hosted on the Google Cloud Platform, the Cloud SQL provides a database infrastructure for application running anywhere. It is fully managed post GRE SQL database service and MySQL database service. The data is encrypted when stored in the database table. Now, Cloud SQL can be integrated with other services such as App Engine, the Compute Engine, and external services via the external IP. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can work with the Cloud SQL. Go to the taskbar on the left hand side, tap on the SQL button. And here you will be asked to create an instance which will be our SQL instance. Just tap on the button. Here you have the option to choose between MySQL and PostGRE SQL. 
The post GIS SQL is in beta format, so I'll select my SQL. Now there are two options. First, we have the first generation and the second generation. Now, second generation has seven times the throughput and 20 times the storage capacity than the first generation. It is less expensive and it supports MySQL 5.6 and 5.7. Now, in order to create your SQL instance, all you need to provide is the instance ID and set a root password. So the instance ID here is Eriraga SQL 2 and the password. Now you need to select the region and the particular zone. And just tap on this create button and your SQL instance will be created within minutes. So now that our instance is created, let's go ahead and click on the instance ID. Now, as you can see here, we have so many options like user, databases, authorization, SSL, backups, replicas, and operation. Now, let's get to the user part. Here, we can create a user account. By default, we have a root user. So, let's create a user. Just input your username and put in the password. And within seconds, your user will be created. Now, coming on to the database part. Here we have the option to create a database. By default, we have three databases, which are the information schema, MySQL, and the performance schema. Let me create a database employee. As you can see, creating a database is so easy. Now, the database which we created and the instance we created can be accessed using the Google Cloud Shell as well as the Cloud SDK. So we'll see how we can access the same using the Cloud Shell. Now, in order to connect your SQL instance to the cloud shell all you need to type is gcloud sql connect the name of the instance and your username the instance name is edureka sql2 and the username is Kistler. as you can see within minutes i was redirected to the mysql shell of the instance now this MySQL shell works in the same way as any other MySQL. So let's first check the databases. So as you can see, we have the EMP database, which I created just now. You can use this database and perform the same functions as a MySQL shell. Now coming back to our services, next we have the Cloud Big Table. Now Cloud Big Table is Google's NoSQL Big Data Database service. It is the same database that provides many core Google services, including search, analytics, maps, and Gmail. It provides massively scalable NoSQL database suitable for low latency and high throughput workloads. It integrates easily with popular big data tools like Hadoop and Spark, and it supports the open source industry-based standard HBase API. Now, Cloud Big Table is a great choice for both operational and analytical applications, including IoT, user analytics, and financial data analytics. You can use Bigtable as the storage engine for large scale, low latency applications, as well as throughput intensive data processing and analytics. Now, Bigtable provisions and scales 200 of petabytes automatically, and it can smoothly handle millions of operations per second. Changes to the deployment configuration are immediate, so there is no downtime during the reconfiguration. Cloud Bigtable stores data in tables, which contains row. Each row is identified by a row key. It is the same as any NoSQL database. Now, data in a row is organized into column families or a groups of columns. A column qualifier identifies a single column within a column family. A cell is the intersection of a row and a column, and each cell can contain multiple versions of a value. Now, working with Cloud Big Table, there are two ways. We have the HBase, which is the shell based tool, and we have CBT, which is the command line tool written in Go. Now let's go ahead and see how we can work with Cloud Big Table. Just go to the storage section, click on Big Table, and here you have the option to create an instance. Just tap on that button, and here you can see you have to provide your instance name. Instance ID is automatically created. Now you have the instance type, which is either production or development. Now production is not preferred unless and until you have a very high availability requirement. With a minimum number of three nodes plus it cannot be downgraded now development seems to be the best choice if you want a low cost instance for development and testing though it does not provide high availability but it can be upgraded to production later now we need to select the zone 
you have to select the storage type which can be either SSD or SDD. Now SSD is, has a lower latency and higher read QPS which is query per second. Just tap on the create button and within seconds your instance will be created. So guys as you can see here that I have created an instance which is edureka-bt the big table instance. Now let's go ahead and fire up this instance using the cloud shell. First of all we need to enable the APIs which is the cloud big table API and the cloud big table admin API. For that we need to select the project here. Let me select my project. Now the APIs are enabled and I've created the instance. All we need to do is open the cloud shell now. So guys as you can see here it automatically connects to the github repository of the Google Cloud Platform. And now to connect our project to the Google Cloud Platform, all we need to do is type in the command gcloud config set project and the project ID. Let me just copy the project ID. And now to start the HBase shell, we need to type in the command quickstart.sh. As you can see, it throws an error that you cannot perform this action because you don't have the permission to modify the Google Cloud SDK installation directory. But instead, they rerun the command with sudo. As you can see, it is scanning for the projects and downloading the projects from the Maven repository. It's building the quick start with the snapshots. And in a moment, you'll be connected to the HBase shell. So guys, as you can see here, now that we have entered the HBase shell, now we need to create a table with a column family CF1. All we need to do is type in this command. Create the name of the table, which is EMP, and the column family name. Now to list it, all we need to type is list. I will list one row in the table EMP. Now to put the value of any value in a row R1 suppose using the column family CF1 and the column qualifier C1 all we need to do is put in this command the row number which is R1 the column family which is CF1 column qualifier C1 and the value to be inserted first of all I'll be inserting a value Okay, now let's insert another value. And to see the values inside a particular table, all you need to do is type in the command scan and the table name. As you can see here in the R1 row, let me put in another value in the row R2 and scan again. You'll see that we have two rows, each of which have the values in the column family one. We have the timestamp and the value written as Edureka. TCP2. Now to drop the table, there are two commands to be inserted, which is disable the table name. I'll put in as disable EMP. And the second one is drop EMP. Now when I list the tables, it will show me zero tables. So the same can be implemented via the CBT, which is the command line using the go command. So let's go back to our presentation. Now next we have the cloud data store. The cloud data store is a NoSQL document oriented database built for automatic scaling, high performance and ease of application development. Cloud data store features include automatic transaction, which implies that operations will either all succeed or none will occur. High availability of reads and writes, massive scalability and high performance, flexible storage and querying of data, we have the balance of strong and eventual consistency. Encryption addressed. The cloud data store automatically encrypts all the data before it is written to the disk and automatically decrypts the data when read by an authorized user. Now, cloud data store is ideal for applications that rely on high availability structured data at scale. You can use the cloud data store to store and query all types of data. You can use it for product catalogs that provide real time inventory and product details for a retailer. User profiles that deliver a customized experience based on the user's past activities and preferences. The transactions based on asset properties, for example, transferring funds from one bank account to another.
Now data objects in cloud data store are known as entities and an entity has one or more named properties each of which can have one or more values. Entities of the same kind do not need to have the same properties and an entity's value for a given property do not need to be of the same data type. Cloud data store supports a variety of data types for property values. These include the integers, floating point number, strings, dates and binary data. Each entity in the cloud data store has a key that uniquely identifies it. The key consists of the following components. Let us see. So first let's select a location. Now entities are nothing but data objects in the cloud data store as I mentioned earlier. Now it is setting the region and we'll have to input the following identifiers for a particular entity. We have the namespace of the entity which allows it for multi-tenancy, the kind of the entity which categorizes it for purposes of cloud data store queries. We have an identifier for the individual entity which can either be a key or an integer. An optional ancestor path locating the entity within the cloud data store hierarchy. As you can see here, we have the namespace, the kind, the key identifier and the properties to be added. So let's input the name. The kind I'm entering is our demo, which will easily help me categorize it for future purposes. Now, key identifier can be numeric ID or a custom name. And just tap on the create button. Now you have two options, which are query by kind or query by GQL. You can add properties such as for the name, I'll enter type string. You can add another property. Just click on the save button. Now you have two options here, query by kind or query by GQL. You can filter the entities here, apply filter, which is the key ID is an integer equal to 500. Applying filters, you will get the following output. Now that we have seen cloud data store, let's go ahead and have a look at the cloud spanner. A cloud spanner is a fully managed mission critical relational database service that offers transactional consistency at a global scale. Schema, SQL, and automatic synchronous replication for high availability. Now, cloud spanner is the only enterprise grade global distributed and strongly consistent database service built for the cloud specifically to combine the benefits of both relational database structures with the non relational base horizontal scale. This combination delivers high performance transactions and strong consistency across rows, regions, and continents with an industry leading 99.99% availability SLA, no plan downtime, and enterprise gate security. Now, as you can see here, the spanner gives a certain advantages over traditional relational database as well as traditional non relational database. As you can see in the traditional relational, we cannot have high availability as well as scalability. And in traditional non-relational, we cannot have a particular schema and we do not use SQL. But in Cloud Spanner, we have the benefits of both the traditional relational and the traditional non-relational. Now let's go ahead and work with Google Cloud Spanner. Just go to the Spanner. It automatically enables the Cloud Spanner API for your project, so you do not have to do it manually. So now let's go ahead and create an instance. We can write the instance name. You can select the configuration of regional or multi-regional. You can select the number of nodes. Just tap on the create button and it will create a cloud spanner instance for you. So spanner is very easy. You just need to tap on create database button and it will create a database. You can add a table. You can add columns here. You can also add columns here. So suppose you want to add the ID also. You can set the primary key. Just tap on the create button. And Spanner will automatically create the database for you. You can monitor your database or you can change the database. You can also query in a database. You can run a query from here or you can add it just by selecting the particular database and you can edit the schema. You can add a, add a column 
or delete a column or you can add values now that we have seen the cloud spanner here are some other useful cloud storage options we have the persistent disk cloud bigquery and the google drive now persistent disk is a high performance block storage service suitable for virtual machines and container storage it offers unmatched price to performance ratio you only pay for the capacity and you are never charged for the provision iops additionally persistent disk offers multi readers mounts and on demand volume resizing to simplify operations now bigquery is google's fully managed low cost analytics data warehouse it is serverless and there is no infrastructure to manage no need to guess the needed capacity or over provision and you do not need a database administrator you can focus on analyzing data to find meaningful insights now finally google drive is a collaborative space for storing sharing and editing files including google docs with a 15 gb of storage space available for free accounts now that we have seen all the services provided by gcp let's see exactly where and when these services are being used as different application and workloads require different storage and database solution google offer a full suite of industry leading storage services that are price performant and meet your needs for structured unstructured transactional and relational data the image given here helps you identify the solution that fit your scenarios whether they are mobile application hosting commercial software data pipelines or storing backups now you might be wondering what is google cloud storage for firebase now firebase mobile and web access to google cloud storage with serverless third party authentication and authorization now let us see when these storage are used and in which scenarios first if we want to store a blob type we use the cloud storage to use images pictures videos objects and unstructured data when we come to nosql we have the cloud data store and the cloud big table cloud data store is used for hierarchical data and cloud big table is used for low latency read and write access and high throughput analytics coming to sql we have the cloud sql which is the web framework for structured data and cloud spanner which is used for mission critical applications and high transactions now cloud storage the examples are storing and streaming multimedia storing for data analytics load and disaster recovery coming on to cloud data store it is used for user profiles product catalogs and game state now cloud big table is used for iot finance personalization recommendation monitoring and graphs cloud sql is used for blogs content management websites business intelligence application crm erp and e commercial application coming on to cloud spanner it is used for financial service which are mission critical global supply chain and retail now we are left with the persistent disk a persistent disk are used for virtual machines to share read only access data across vms it is used as a backup of running vms now bigquery is used for large data analytical reporting data science and analysis and big data processing using sql so guys i hope you have enjoyed this session on the google cloud storage and you might have a brief idea for the various storage services which were offered by google thank you for listening to this video i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning